right, well, with the tides of changing, Legendary Snail starts his Marine up in control, but this time the aliens are in pipeline, and Meow is ready for a comeback with a 2-2-1 split up through to Nano and Pipeline. Yeah, for Meow it's gonna be really important to hold control over East Control since the Sys Chain is going through the dome. Um, with the new Veil, of course, it's definitely eligible to get for Nano. And they're doing the pretty much the same. Four Harvester opening, trying to get Nano and Cargo at the same time. Eagle Eye going down quickly to the first Skulk engagement in here, but there's three Marines here in Topo. And wow, a great pistol shot by Kingyo takes down Seiko. Oh, I mean, you could see the difference here. Um, Snails played it much more slower, much more carefully by the first engagement. So really waited for the Moraines to spread out in the East Junction in C12. And the Meow Skulls actually went in into Chopo into well-positioned Moraines. Sips was pretty lucky or um, skilled enough to get one of those Moraines, but it was absolutely unnecessary for the other Skulls to try to gauge the next two Moraines. King Yo and Ray, a deadly combination, in my opinion, making their way through East Junction, get taken down, revenge by Psycho there. And Infestation moving up to C12, so they're going quite aggressive as well. I tend to say that if you can, even if you lose the first engagement on Veil, vale, as long as they don't push much past Skylights and Topo, you're still in a really good spot as aliens. It's if they start pressuring your res is really when stuff gets into trouble because that means that they're sinking money or they're earning money in their res as well. Hercules working here, or Heracles working here in Overlook. Two Skulks make their way in and will stop this res from even being really started. They're going to leave the ghost structure though also to deny the res from the Marine team. Yeah, we can see that Snance is actually going for the exact same tactic Meow tried. I'm um, going for fast ops. I wouldn't be surprised to see face tech. Oh no, shotguns before face tech. So a little bit of variation there. Which could definitely well, help out in getting a face gate up. Yeah, in the, in the hands of these players, that's a pretty a pretty good move. I think that the shotguns will be very powerful for them. They did go for the second IP right away as well. They get the uh, RT down here in C12 that had just pretty much been dropped as those Marines walked in, so it didn't take much to take it down. And uh, over an overlook, they will take down the extractor that has not been built all the way. Heracles trying to make his way back. Seiko gets just back into that vent right now. And oh boy, you can see for snails, um, it's also not looking perfect. They're down to three extractors. They're about to lose topple right now, having struggles to get into the play. And they need to, I mean, it shouldn't really care about C12 or cargo or double to get this one down. They need Get that but stable gameplay first and need to establish a face gate or I mean some sort of map control before they can hit some aggressive moves. Well and the problem is because he went for the armory and the shotgun, you know, losing those extractors is really hurting right now because he doesn't have enough to research phase tech, let alone drop a phase gate once he does. Oh, he so does slip even too. I see. Yeah, I mean this is uh oh he did, there it is. So you know they've really got to start winning these engagements right now. You can see C12 is going back up with this three-man pressure team coming in, and it looks like King Ray. Looks like there's two shotguns and one rifle in here. No, two rifles and one shotgun. But the shotgunner is getting all the pressure from the aliens, and they take them down. Look at this. I mean, using the enzyme has been so effective in play lately. We've seen time and time again drifters all over the map again, like we're used to seeing. Oh, yeah, that's right, and. From the whole engagement, only Ray, the leader of the team, survived right here with the shotgun lurk, had to fly away. But as he is alone, he has to pull back. There's not much he can do. Oh, and Ray is in trouble now. <laughs> but right from behind, Eagle Eye, King Yo coming back. Wow. Eagle Eye going down right away. And look at this. Like I oh! said, he. Oh! Oh my god, folks, you just saw it. That lurk went down, and that is not good timing. At four and a half minutes in, he's only had that lurk for maybe a minute, and losing it this early is a complete loss of that Perez, oh, and yeah. could be a big turning point for the team. That is absolutely right. I mean, you could also, 
You could almost say this is a disaster for me out here, losing that lurk early on, and it's so unnecess unnecessarily here. Skipjack a little bit too greedy, he thought, oh, that's an LMG, but the shotgun that died right in front of Pingu, so he could pick it up and get this devastating shots into that lurk. Definitely underestimating the skills of Kingo there. Now you got pressure both in cargo and in nano grid. The Marines and a three-man force are coming into nano really with not much opposition. Glimix is sitting in the vent um, but has not yet made a way to engagement so he's really just under the floor Base doing rush. nothing. Base rush incoming. Base rush incoming. Drifter and three skulks but we do have an ops to beacon but not the rest. Oh my god he just spent like some med packs. He cannot beacon. He can't beacon. Oh, oh no. no. Oh my goodness. And this might have just taken legendary snails down with no obs. They're dropping the chair down in cargo and they're rushing as quick as they can to build it. But they're going to lose. Well, I mean, everything at base is disappearing right now. Three skulks alive. Rylos goes down. Eagle Eye still here. If they can take Eagle Eye down and knock out that arms lab, that's a res sink. They do have 66 res in the bank oh, down here in cargo. They're recycled. And with, recycled and yeah, but with the enzyme going off, they're going to take it. We still have that. Wow. Oh, the lurk is going to cargo at the same time. But it's... Oh, several, oh another lurk going down. Soups to Oh, my God. Oh my. That's... That's really bad. I mean, I cannot I cannot even begin to tell you how bad that is. Glimix is at 40 res. Raylo's at 40 res as well. So is Psycho. That's going to be three fades. But two players that tried to go lurk... That's going to hurt them by not having that res up more. Now they're working on three extractors while the Marines are kind of struggling here to figure out what to do. Legendary Snails needs to do something big right now. They had taken out Nano, but it looks like they're trying to rebuild it. Heracles making his way back in. And uh, we've got King Yo and Ray making their way to C12. Legendary Snails in probably a better position right now oh. to do some serious damage. But those fades are all out on the field. In about 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, snails are about to get down to one RT, so definitely give the hand to Meow here right now. And they, they need to get some capping back up. And it's really funny to see how both teams dealing that kind of blows to each other, like killing two lurks, losing the base with, with that close timing. Um, big mistake by Ryze not having the 10 rest ready. And he even dropped mad packs when the skulks were coming in the base, so he couldn't beacon even longer. Oh boy, that's. That, that's really now, hurting. I have to say, I kind of love what the aliens are doing. They spread infestation all the way up to control. I mean, what is the chance of a Marine going back up to control? Yeah, pretty much zero. But I can lose this chain here from C12. He can. He probably will. I mean, they've got to do something to slow down the Marines uh, through this uh, corridor here in the dome. Um, you know, some clogs, some hydras, maybe a whip, something to to block it there, but with only 16 res and the first fade, Raylo is finally coming out on the field. Let's follow Raylo now. Raylo and Glimix as well. They're stalking C12 and in they move. Oh, the whole team swarming over those poor Marines. Dan's the king of trying to do their best with the shotguns, but it's not enough. There's two fades, two skulks and enzymes. Uh, it's just completely swarmed. And now they so, move over to Nanogrid to do the same with Heracles. Yeah, this is when the aliens kind of bring it back into focus here. The Marines have lost all, and I mean all, of their expansion res. Uh, they just tried to get one up in Nanograde, which was uh, recycled. And now the aliens are spreading up to control, Topo. they got C12 rebuilding. They're going to be in a fantastic spot. In fact, they can even start spreading from control over to Skylights at this point. Command station under attack. Yeah, that's right. You see, even the aliens are harassing now cargo. I mean, with this kind of funny setup, it's it's really cool because you can definitely utilize the board tunnels to... Um, oh my god, is the server down or is it me? I think I just disconnected. All right, blind are you there? Yeah, I'm. I'm back. I, I'm I don't know what the heck happened, but I lost uh, a couple things. But it looks like the stream is still going, so we're okay. 
Okay, okay. I just need to reconnect to the game, sorry. <laughs> so a beacon pulls all the marines back into cargo and gives the aliens time to go and harass Nanogrid yet again. They are up to four harvesters, and the fifth is going to be going up in skylights. I have to say, I don't think I've really ever seen an alien game quite like this. <laughs> and I love it. I will need your video back too, Blaine. So just, All right. just focus on the game because I'm reconnecting. I can't see anything. Marines moving into C12. They're doing some damage here. But, you know, I really think that the Marines are in a lot of trouble. Um, they have an arms lab. They have a second IP. Shotguns are out, but they're just not really doing enough damage on these fades. Raylo went pretty low, but was able to retreat with his other fades there, absorbing all the damage. Nanogrid power back on yet again. So that brings the Marines up to two extractors. But two extractors to five harvesters is not a good ratio at this point in the game. So at 11 minutes in, you know, these Marines just, they can't hold a room for more than a minute. Yeah. And that's really not a good position to be in. The Marines need to be at this point holding a minimum of three or four extractors. They need to have already had armor one or two and possibly level one weapons out. I mean, the shotguns really started to turn this, but that base rush and the luck of having the commander drop some med packs or ammo packs <laughs> yeah. right at that right time was absolutely what turned this game. Good. Because I think that if they'd gotten back into base there blind, uh, I think we'd be seeing maybe a, a whole different game. Absolutely. I mean, Snails was looking great just before the base rush. I mean, it also triggered the base rush by Meow. I mean, losing the Lurik, we could see they already went up to 5-6 RTs, and they were doing great at a point. Oh my god, I'm just witnessing... Whoa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he got out of there. But that was close. Oh goodness, it was two HP or something. This, <laughs> the magic amount. But you know, and back to that base rush. The benefit of that as well is because they won that engagement, it allowed them to pressure three extractors uh, from control down, and really put the Marines on their back foot because they had to rebuild everything back in cargo and couldn't leave because they were anticipating another base rush down there. So, three Marines here in Pipeline now, all with shotguns. They're working on the shells. And uh, Slipjack does go down to Eagle Eye's shotgun. And, oh, look Space at that, the bone wall. They know they probably can't beacon there. Yeah, the Ops is down. There's no chance to beacon. And they can trade a Hive. It doesn't matter because they have another Hive in control. They just need to take down the see This is gonna be a game. Wow, and well played by Meow. We said it. You know, maybe that first round was just kind of a let's wake up, let's get into this. But holy crap, Meow brought it back big time. And with the help of good timing and bad timing at the same time, uh, they were able to take down this uh, okay. this legendary Snails team. So we're 1-1. Oh, two-two. <laughs> Here goes five down. 